this presentation and uh, the live demo will uh, focus on the Oryx multi-core microcontroller and the main features, of course, of our UDE, the Universal Debug Engine. But in fact, um, the features uh, that I will show are generally available for also for other multi-core controllers that we support with UDE. So um, there is more or less uh, yeah, nothing specific to only one uh, special microcontroller like the Oryx. So let's get started. Um, so before I start with the live demo, I want to answer the questions, what is so special about UDE's multi-core support for Oryx? In contrast to other microcontrollers, or multi-core architectures, especially those we know for years uh, from the PC world or from consumer electronics, a multi-core controller like the Oryx address a completely different application domain. So uh, automotive, for example, or industrial. So everything that needs real-time capability and also uh, needs safety features. So the Oryx is a mix of homogeneous cores based on the tri-core architecture and some other cores like the GTM or the HSM. The GTM um, provides uh, powerful functions for, for timers and for uh, signal generation or signal analyzing. It is a Bosch IP and it's licensed by Infineon. And the HSM, uh, this is the hardware security mo module um, of the Aurix, which brings some security feature into the device. Um, with such a mix of homogeneous and heterogeneous cores, uh, the software architecture looks also speci specific. Um, on the left side of uh, this slide, um, we look at only a single core application, maybe a legacy application. Um, this could be a use case also for the Oryx, uh, but we are more focusing ob obviously on the, on the right side here on this slide. So here on the right side, we find two different scenarios. The first scenario is uh, also a single core applications that are running in parallel, but independent from each other on one hardware platform. So each application has its own core. Um, or we have a, a true multi-core application that is distributed over the available cores. There is also possible a mix between those two scenarios, um, but for now, we want to concentrate on the uh, monolithic application. So what you need for debugging? Uh, for the multiple independent application scenario, uh, where we have um, multiple applications running on the different cores, uh, we need to ensure that the debugger uh, only acts on the application that is really under test. So each run control action, that means a go step breaking the application by the debugger must be applied only on that specific core. For the scenario where we have a monolithic application that is distributed over the whole system, um, we need synchronized debugging or synchronized run control. And that scenario, uh, for that scenario, we want to uh, take a deeper look. So before I jump to the debugger, I'd like to show you the hardware setup, which I have on my desktop, which you can't see at the moment. Um, we have uh, here a Oryx Infineon uh, Tri-Core TC39 uh, on this tri-board here. And this tri-board is connected, connected using the 
uh, DAP, the uh, device access port, which is an Infineon specific uh, debug um, interface to our UAD2 Pro, which is uh, the smallest device in our universal access device family. Um, the only target specific part from our side, from the tool side, is this uh, debug adapter, which is um, which is a combination of JTAG and DAP for the Infineon specific connectors here. And the UAD2 Pro is connected using USB to my PC at the moment. Okay, then, um, yeah, let's jump over to the, uh, to the debug tool. Um, the first thing I'd like to show is how to set up a debug session from scratch for a multi-core system like the Oryx. And that's a very easy. Um, we have to create a workspace. Uh, a workspace is uh, nothing else as a, a um, file that contains all the information that is needed uh, for the debug session. It contains the target configuration. That means uh, which target should be connected, which uh, target um, um, interface um, should be used and which uh, UAD should be used. I do this as follows. I, using the file menu, I create a new workspace, give it a name. I have already one prepared, so don't overwrite it. And then I have to select uh, which target should be connected. Um, so um, using the default button, you get a whole bunch of all the supported microcontroller architectures of UDE. And we select the um, Oryx 2G from Infineon. And the uh, this is a TC39 B step starter kit. And we want to connect using the DAP. Then I save this target configuration. There's already one here in this, in this folder. So I cancel this step and use this target configuration. Press OK. And then I will be asked which course should be debugged. You see, uh, we have all the six cores of this tri-core here available uh, and um, in the pre-definition checked. And also the GTM is available for debugging. So I have no code for the GTM, so I leave it unticked here. Press OK, and then the um, the Oryx is connected by UDE, and I can see it here uh, in my um, in my message log that all the six cores are connected to the debugger. For all core, a internally a a debug instance was created, uh, but uh, you can't see that. Um, the only part which um, indicates that we have different debuggers here is on the very top in this toolbar. So you see uh, every core and the status of every core. So core zero is uh, in reset and uh, core one to core four are in active um, right now. Um, they have to be waked up by the application. And so application is a good good um, uh, hint here. We need the application as well. So uh, I load the program here for the Oryx. Um, in ELF file, I select the ELF file, and then I get this window opened, which is the multi-core and multi-program loader, which allows us to distribute the application to the whole system. Um, for this application, we have only one ELF file that should be used by all the cores. So um, I load this application by core zero, which is in reset now, and uh, but it's active. All other cores are inactive and can't load the application. So I need to tick the uh, load functionality for the binary here. And then uh, I need or I want to see all the debug in, uh, debug information in all the other cores. So press OK. And then uh, the uh, internal uh, mem tool, which is our flash programming tool, gets opened because we recognize automatically that this application is located by the debugger, uh, by the compiler uh, for flash memory. So I program the application. And from now on, I can uh, run the application. So, and I can now open some windows and uh, start debugging. Um, 
I can save this workspace, of course, and I use it um, the next day uh, with the same settings. Um, for now, for the next steps or for the next um, things I'd like to show, I open an already existing workspace. Uh, which contains uh, some more windows. It's the same application. So I will be asked again to load the application into the flash. So I know uh, we have already flashed this application so I can verify the flash contents. We have no differences there. Everything is fine. And then I can close this um, mental application. So you see, the, uh, um, we have opened uh, some more windows here, uh, watch windows uh, with some variables uh, shown. And uh, I'd like to show you at first a new feature of the UDE 2021, which is uh, very useful if you have uh, multiple screens available. Um, so if I want to um, have UDE on uh, more than one screen, I can uh, put uh, windows outside the main uh, user interface, um, uh, for example, to a other screen or here. I need to close the WebEx tool here for right now, so I can put it here. And uh, yes, now I can um, start uh, debugging and uh, run the application. So then I want to show you uh, how a breakpointing works. I put a breakpointing window here and uh, let me select, for example, a, um, a function in core one uh, and um, set a breakpoint here. And you see, if I hit the breakpoint, the complete system is, is halted. So this is the use case uh, where we have uh, a synchronized debugging enabled. So this is the default use case if you start with a new workspace, so you have synchronized debugging. If you want to, um, to, um, to have only a partial synchronization of about uh, one or two cores, then you can easily uh, configure and the behavior of the synchronization using the multi-core run control manager. There is a, a group of cores that should be synchronized for debugging. And by pressing or by double clicking one of these cores, you can um, remove it from that group. And with that, you can uh, also debug uh, applications and for example, the, the use case of independent applications which are running on uh, independent cores. But um, for this, you see, okay, uh, every core is halted synchronously. And from this point of here, I can also uh, do single stepping and you will see also the other cores um, performs single steps as well. So you see it on the yellow markers here in the different windows. This is core three, this is core two, and this is here core one. Okay, uh, another very um, useful feature or the last useful feature I'd like to show here for multi-core debugging are multi-core breakpoints. So I disable this breakpoint here and um, make it go again so all the cores are now running. Uh, multiple breakpoints are very useful if you have shared code. For example, we have uh, one function here uh, which is shared by core zero, core one, and core two. Um, I can uh, show you this function also for the core one. And if I look it into the, uh, the function here in the mixed mode, which shows us the machine instructions and the addresses, and also uh, here, then you will see the, these are the same addresses. But I, if I set a breakpoint, for example, here in core one, you will see uh, that uh, whenever I make it go, then uh, we only uh, get holded in core one. That's, the reason for that is that every breakpoint is 
um, assigned to a specific core. So uh, now you would say, okay, then uh, I have to set a breakpoint in core one as well and core two as well, but this would be very annoying. Uh, and for this case, we have um, implemented or realized a so-called multi-core breakpoint. I can change the behavior of that breakpoint. And now we have a multi-core breakpoint. I switch back to the normal mode here to make it more clear. And then I can uh, make it go. And then you will see, okay, this multi-core breakpoints um, um, have effect uh, also on the other cores that are executing this code. So if I might go, then you will see, okay, now we are in core zero, then we hold in core two, and finally, uh, yeah, in core one as well. And this is a, it's a very uh, yeah, useful feature for shared code uh, where uh, uh, you don't know which core is actually executing that code. So, and finally, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, I'd like to show you uh, another nice feature in your, the new UE 2021, which is the feature of, uh, called perspectives. So if you want to concentrate only on one core, it would be very uh, overwhelming what you see here. Uh, so if you uh, look at a specific core, or you want to look at a specific core, you can create a perspective. I have prepared one perspective uh, for core one. And with that per, per, uh, perspective, you get only the windows open for core one. Or if you switch to the perspective of core two, then only the windows of core two um, are visible at the moment. And if I go back to default, you see everything. Okay. And uh, with that, I'd like to, to end my presentation. And um, I think you have seen that at first it is very easy to start with UDE and to create a new debugger session for multi-core controllers like the Oryx. And uh, yeah, we are with a few clicks and the predefined target configurations, it is very easy to, to start from scratch uh, and create a new debugger session. It's not magic. Uh, once you have set up a debug session, UDE provides you um, with a lot of features. Uh, I showed you some of them, uh, for example, uh, our common user interface that uh, shows the complete system, not uh, only separate cores. So you don't need uh, to open uh, new uh, debug instances for each core. Um, you have seen, I, I missed that in the presentation, uh, the core coloring. So each window um, which belongs to a specific core is colored by a, a unique color. And you can customize the environment um, very easily um, yeah, to make use, for example, of, of, of your second screen if you have any on your desktop. So I showed you different modes of debug synchronization, or I showed you one mode of debug synchronization, but I mentioned that you can, uh, besides the fully synchronized debugging, also a partitionally debugging, synchronized debugging, or you can switch off the synchronization completely. And finally, uh, I showed you the multi-core breakpoints.